So here we go. So what is Staphylococcus aureus? It is a gram positive cocci, which all of you know. And uh, why is it called Staphylococcus? Because it is bunch of grapes. It looks like bunch of grapes. Actually, there was a slide here which was showing uh, Staphylococcus aureus on background. I think it has got uh, deleted during this transformation. So, yeah. So, in healthcare settings, Staphylococcus aureus causes serious or fatal infections. Okay. What does it cause? It causes bacteremia, sepsis, and pneumonia, endocarditis, osteomyelitis. Name it, it can cause anything. Okay. And why is it fatal? Because previously there was methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus. But in recent past, there has been emergence of methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus then vancomycin intermediate staphylococcus aureus and vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus so these three are worrisome in later recent past these three are the worrisome organisms so now this staphylococcus aureus which we are discussing today here uh, the background picture can you can see i guess uh, this is this cause healthcare associated infection. Okay, this is HAI, which is prominently known as HAI. This is the most common pathogen in United States, in and in an ICR especially. Okay, and what does it cause? Invasive infections. Okay, and it is very high in neonates, especially in preterm and low birth infants. So. It can cause both outbreaks and can be endemic in the NICU. Means it can be endemic, stay in NICU. Okay. So where does it stay and how do we do surveillance for that? That we are going to discuss in this uh, session. Then when it causes the staphylococcus aureus, this infection, it has long-term sequelae, which is includes negative long-term neurocognitive outcomes in newborns and it has poor prognosis so with this is worrisome right uh, when the baby grows in further in future it uh, has a, a lot of effect on its neurocognitive uh, development so mrsa has been the focus of preventive efforts why preventive because of its difficulty in treating and eradicating it okay so why does it happen so what is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus this is a bacteria which was not prevalent prior okay it came uh, it became prevalent in recent past from 1960s and it was very prevalent in 90s it is from 1980 onwards and now it is it is known means more than uh, 30 to 40 percent of staphylococcus aureus can be community acquired and definitely causes healthcare associated infections so this is resistant to beta lactans the most commonly used drugs, penicillin and cephalosporins. So this is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. And it accounts to about 20 to 80 percent of all noso nosocomial staphylococcus aureus infections in many centers across the world. This is the latest uh, study which has been done and it has been found. Okay. So it increases the mortality. If not mortality, then morbidity and hospital stay costs so all these have increased because of this mrsa so wh has reported 64 percent of mrsa infected patients are more likely to die than non-mrsa infected patients so mrsa is causes more mortality okay and it now, how does it uh, transmit it? It is by physical contact and rarely by air. So this is the uh, today's uh, session. Uh, we are focusing upon how to prevent it. So there is, uh, and it is a greater concern regarding its high virulence capacity, diverse affair, array of life-threatening infections, and adapt to different environmental conditions. So this makes it robust. MRSA. The bacteria has been uh, made robust because of these three uh, property of it. So MDR, what is MDR? Now again, MDR is resistant to three or more antimicrobial classes. 
okay if, if the bacteria is uh, staphylococcus aureus a is resistant to three or more antimicrobial classes then it is called mdr resist multi-drug resistant bacteria now what is vancomycin resistance this is come uh, from say 2000 early 2000s okay uh, this has come into picture and now this is also prevalent now when we check uh, susceptibility in a uh, culture media okay sensitivity test if it is it is called sensitive when the minimum inhibitory con concentration mic okay make for vancomycin is for uh, four to eight micrograms per ml then it is classified as vancomycin susceptible sorry uh, vancomycin susceptible is less than two if it is between four to eight then it is called vancomycin intermediate resistant and it is resistant it is clearly resistant then when it is vancomycin when mic is more than 16. so then the drugs which are helpful in treating this vancomycin resistant organism are helpful say for example tgcycline ticoplanin daptomycin Okay, or these are the few drugs which are uh, quinoprestin. Uh, okay, that, those things, those drugs are handful to treat it. So we are left with no choice than to prevent it. Okay, prevention is, so hence prevention is better than cure for this cases. Now, what are the risk factors in NICU which leads, uh, which leads to increase in neonatal mortality or morbidity? So the risk factors are low birth weight babies or the preterm baby weight babies. Okay, they are more susceptible. Younger gestational age, that is preterm babies. And immunity of the neonate is they have immature immune system. Okay, their uh, immune system is not mature enough. So they are uh, they might be immunocompromised, immature, ineffective levels of antibodies. Okay, so with which makes them susceptible for these infections. Then comorbidities, if any other comorbidities are there. Are there. Other, other things are like overcrowding, understaffing, then parental nutrition, invasive medical devices, a prolonged hospital stay, recurrent uh, testing, okay, increased length of stay, okay, recurrent testing, which uh, say here, okay, electrodes, probes and cannulas, all these, uh, leads to break in barrier skin barrier okay so which again helps in um, in incubation helps in incubation of um, staphylococcus aureus if proper precautions are not taken so hence these are the risk factors in an icu 